Hello and welcome everybody. In this video I want to share with you my so far favorite Elden Ring build, the Black Flame Ranger. Think Aragorn from Lord of the Rings on steroids with some hot and crispy extras to spice things up. The basic idea was to create a ranger-like character that is proficient with bow and sword. And because we can make this work with Faith as our only damage relevant stat, we throw in some black flame magic on top. I try to keep the basic setup as buff free as possible, but of course you can do some crazy things with fire damage in this game. No bows might not be the most desirable weapon in a boss fight, but they are great for killing standard enemies quickly and from afar or significantly soften up bigger targets from a safe distance. Not to mention they are a handy utility tool for all these flame spitting pillars. You can also switch quickly between different damage types and the FP costs are very low. In addition, a ranger needs a good sword and around level 150 I prefer a great sword with sword dance for that. But I will also show you a straight sword variant for faster attacks and even less stat requirements. That will make this playable as a very strong early game build. And lastly, we throw the coolest incantations of all in the mix. With the black flame spells, you have very powerful and versatile tools for boss fights and big enemies when the bow is just not strong and fast enough. In this setup, you will also have your incantations always available in your offhand. No weapon switching needed. You can easily keep a buff and a heal over time always up. With the concentration on one primary damage stat, we also create a lot of freedom for some extra vigor and mind to provide an unrestricted gameplay experience. And a little disclaimer here, I recently started a NG Plus playthrough with this char, that is where all the early game footage is taken from. Let's take a look at the weapons and skills used in this build. As always, you can find all the wiki links in the video description. Starting with the bow. The Urtree bow gives us the best damage in this setup as a faith scaling weapon. Flaming arrows are our main ammunition for the mighty shot skill which comes with the bow and cannot be changed. Holy arrows are also hitting very hard with this bow and are absolutely devastating on anything that counts as undead. They also prevent undead from resurrecting, incorporating another great utility into this build. While Mighty Shot is not very suitable in most boss fights, because you are stuck in the animation for quite a while and damage is not super impressive, it is an awesome and cheap tool to dispatch most standard enemies from a great distance, thinning out packs of enemies or seriously damaging bigger foes before they are in melee range. So overall a great weapon to roam the open world and a viable, cost efficient method to deal with a lot of encounters. Once we are getting toe to toe we quickly switch to our sword. For the final setup around level 150 I chose the Knight's Greatsword. It fits the overall style, has superior reach which goes well with the Ash of War, high base damage and low stat requirements. You can also get this weapon very early in the game. An alternative would be the Bastard Sword that you can get without grinding and has even lower stat requirements. It provides only slightly less damage, but it is a lot shorter than the Knight's Great Sword. But it is a great low level alternative that saves you some stat points. The Knight's Great Sword also has a unique and cool two handed R1 moveset. For the Edge of War, I usually go with Sword Dance set to the flame affinity, so we don't have to invest any points in strength or dexterity other than meeting weapon requirements. Combined with the long reach of the knight's greatsword and the forward pull of the Ash of War, we can counter most attacks and deal significant damage. Sword Dance does take your weapon attack rating into account and I show you how we can push this easily beyond 1000. If you prefer to lean more into the weapon moveset itself, opposed to frequently using the Ash of War, then Flame Strike is your best friend, pushing the attack rating easily above 1200, which is exceptional for a non-colossal weapon. In an idle state with Sword Dance set to the Flame Affinity, we have an attack rating of 874. With the Golden Bow, which is usually always up, 
we already reach 1005. Throw in your flask and you are sitting at 1134 without a strong but short and somewhat annoying to upkeep flame grant me strength buff. If you go the flame strike route, you have an attack rating of 1287 with flask, golden wow and the ignited blade. If you then activate flame grant me strength, you can push this to a whopping 1545 attack rating. So Sortens hits like a truck and interrupts most enemy attacks who will also usually just blindly run into it. It is super cheap for the damage it puts out and overall a very fast skill. Flame Strike is better for the weapon move set enjoyer and let's be honest, a burning blade just looks cool, so it also wins the grip competition here. For those who prefer a ranger style-wise with a straight sword or want to save some more stat points to shine even earlier in the game, I would go with the broadsword, which is even the starting sword for the confessor class that would be optimal for this build. You have a damage trade-off, but gain a much faster attack speed, enabling you to often connect two hits where a great sword would only land one. But you do have a significantly shorter reach, which is why I would stick with Flame Strike for this setup. The Ash of War can be acquired very early in the game and pushes the attack rating of a plus 25 broadsword to above 1000, combined with a fast attack speed, making this a deadly option on its own. The final essential piece in this build is the God Slayer seal in your offhand, which can be found early on in Stormvale Castle, together with your most important spell, Black Flame. Not only does the incantation deal some very chunky fire damage, but it also saps enemies health over 2 seconds, making it very effective against high health targets. This spell can be charged, of which we will take advantage of in the talisman section for boss fights. At 80 faith, the Godslayer seal still outperforms the Erdtree seal and for this build I use only Godslayer incantations and some buffs. I chose Black Flame incantations for the pure style and general role playing theme, but also because I only wanted to incorporate some spells as the icing on the cake for this ranger setup here and the synergies for sticking with faith as the damage stat are simply terrific. We can completely concentrate on buffing fire damage, turning this into a super simple to execute but also very versatile to play character. For the spells I go with the obvious golden wow to push damage and improve our damage resistance. In addition, I use blessings boon as a very convenient heal over time. Black flame is your bread and butter spell. Scoring Black Flame is rather situational for some additional AoE against minor foes. Black Flame Ritual is very cool, but only really effective if you can initiate it against unaware targets or when using a Spirit Ash for distraction to place it under a boss. It's also acquired very late in the game. Black Flame Protection is another strong buff option if you are facing a lot of physical damage although it reduces all healing by 20%. Flame Grant Me Strength is obviously a super strong buff in this setup, but I rarely use it. The short duration makes it a chore to keep it up, but for some chunky burst damage or if you don't mind rebuffing, this spell adds some significant damage to your Ashes of War and Incantations. If you are facing fire resistant enemies, then you can of course always switch to another seal and a different elemental damage type. Same goes for the Sword Dance Ash of War. Simply set it to holy damage that also scales with faith. In that case, Sacred Blade becomes an extremely powerful skill as an additional option for you. In general is switching between a Black Flame Ranger and a Holy Ranger just a matter of a few spells, weapon skills and one talisman so you always have a backup against fire resistant foes. The Erdtree Bow with Holy Arrows becomes even stronger in that case. Let's take a look at stats for level 150. I also included the numbers for a level 100 setup. You can really make it work with a different bow super early in the game. Base weapons, seal and spells can be obtained within the first hours. Vigor is at 48. 
You could also swap two more points from mind into this stat, but for me, 48 is enough in the late game and for the first part of NG+. Mind at 32 to provide you with plenty of FP, to use your Ashes of War frequently and enough to throw in some casts or uphold the rather expensive Golden Wow buff. 23 Endurance for the armor setup with 52 poise that I will show you later. Strength and Dexterity are only here to meet weapon requirements. If you stick with the broadsword, you don't need to invest a single point here. 80 faith for maximum damage and the other stats don't matter at all. Talismans are the fire scorpion charm to push all fire damage by 12%. Ritual sword talisman that pushes all damage, including your incantations, as long as you're at full health. The shard of Alexander for plus 15% damage to your mighty shot and melee ashes of war. And in the last slot, I usually use the Arrow's Sting Talisman when I'm roaming the open world or dungeons to push my bow damage. In a boss fight, I would switch to Godfrey Icon to make the most out of my charged Black Flame Firebolts. The Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman is also an option, but with Golden Bow, you are already at 27% physical protection. And if you add Black Flame Protection to that, you can push this to 52% for 70 seconds. The armor I'm using here is the Knight's Cavalry Armor, the Black Hood, and Blights, Greaves and Gauntlets to achieve maximum drip levels and also 52 poise, letting you power through enemy light attacks if you are trading damage. You can use really anything as long as you keep medium rolling and I would recommend reaching 51 poise at some point in the later game. Finally, for the Flask of Wondrous Physic, you go with the Flame Shrouding Crack tier and a second option of your choice. Damage Negation, Heal Over Time or Stamina Buffs are the best candidates here. Overall, this is my personal favorite as an effective and fun to play build. It is not stuck at using just one or two skills or spells over and over. I immensely enjoy my NG Plus playthrough with this setup at the moment. I do like to alternate between Sword Dance and Flaming Strike as my Ashes of War and the bow is a really underrated weapon for open world exploration and dungeon crawling. Sure, it is not very effective against bosses, but there is where you start to throw Black Flame incantations at your adversaries. What do you think about this build and what else would you like to see covered in the future? Let us know in the comments. That is all for now about Elden Ring, take good care of yourself and enjoy your gaming sessions.